Hello and welcome to the show. Some updates for you. Um, so first and foremost, it's 105 degrees outside with a heat index of 115. So the garage is closed, so the light's going to be a little worse, and uh, unfortunately the audio is going to be a little worse, but hopefully it's not too bad. So we ordered some brackets from uh, this gentleman here, Ronnie Dickman's Fero Accessories. Um, they were like the only brackets available for a front wheel drive V6 to da 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 da. So, um, unfortunately, this being a quad four, even though it is a gear track, the transmission brackets here are a little bit different. And when we were taking them off, as you can see here, they were brazed into the um, uh, control arm here. So you actually can't push it out. As much as that looks like it's two separate pieces, you can actually feel where it's brazed in there and it won't come out. So what we're probably going to have to do is we're going to have to modify this arm here with, where's my other little bracket? This here. So this bracket here is going to have to go on top because we need to change the way this moves. So we're going to basically going to get this to, we really haven't figured out if we're going to go like this or like this or like this. Basically the Fierro's arms push it, can push forward and backwards. So we can push on either that side or on this side. So we can push forward and backward. And then this is, this arm here goes down and up. And that's where this little arm comes in. So we can, using this, get this to go. If we can slide it in here when I'm doing this one-handed, this can be kind of a pain in the butt. Yeah, so you see how that is laying in right there? You kind of get the idea. So the idea is going to be to get this to go up and down and this one to go back and forth. Um, it would be better if we could figure out a way to get this to go a little bit more on an angle, this one here because we can push, given the angle, a little bit up and down if we come in from underneath here. I'll show you. If we come in from underneath here on a bit of an angle, we can get it to push, but we're gonna have to find a way to, so what I'm thinking is, we're just gonna grind all of this off, which um, this bracket here, that's really what I'm talking about. We're going to weld in a plate, and then we're going to Bolt this in from the side. We're just gonna have to measure, which is not my strong suit. If you've seen the car, we're gonna have to measure this out. So basically we're trying to take this here. If I can kind of figure a way to show this on the show. So we're trying to take this from being basically like that to more on that sort of angle. And then that'll let us have it push up and down a little bit better but we're gonna to have to really mess around with how we want that to be. We also have some brackets that we ordered. Um, these, same thing, are not gonna bolt right in as I was hoping they would. Again, it's a slightly different transmission. Um, this one's probably gonna be the most useful one to us. We're probably gonna to have to use this and maybe the original Fiero brackets. We might have to see, we might have to bust those things out. Um, other than that, we kind of zip tied this back up in the place. We're just running some cooling, coolant system flush through here. We're just going to let that go through two or three more times. As you can see, there's a lot of material in there. We're trying to basically get all the rust that was in the quad four out of it um, because that's not doing us any good having it a rusty cooling system in there. So we're just going to run that through there, and then we're going to run through a lot of um, cooling system flush. We actually went to the junkyard with the hope of getting a new windshield for the car. Unfortunately, we got it like 90% of the way off. Um, and then down underneath here, you can't really see it and record it on the show. But down underneath here, you can see um, how this kind of set up. It's underneath here. Got it all the way off, stripped all the way around. But... Uh, the last little bit ended up being what cracked on us and that caused the whole thing to not shatter, but basically turn into this at uh, the junkyard. 
So in my Solace, I picked up some Fiero motors. I'm gonna take those apart and try and get them working. Um, so this is one of the uh, new ones I got. Uh, it's mounted in here. This one will go down, but it won't go up, which leads me to think it might be an electrical issue. So we're gonna pull this one apart in a future episode and take a look at it and see if we can get it working. The other thing too is we gotta figure out why the radiator fan ain't working and I think it might just be a blown fuse. We also ordered for the little clutch setup here. So this is an M12 by one. This is a unknown fitting. So you really can't, I was told it was an M10 by one, but I really can't find it. I got an M10 by one adapter in here. So this is an M10 adapter right here. As you can see, it is almost the right size. It is almost the right size, but it's just a little too small. So then we go up here, we find our M12. Oops, sorry for the loud noise. We find our M12 adapter. And it's just a little bit too big. So you would think, oh, M11, but not so much the case. So what we're going to do is we're going to get out the uh, file probably, or maybe just a small pipe cutter. We're going to pull this fitting off. We're going to put an M12 fitting on it, and then we're going to adapt it using that one right there. The reason we're not messing with this line here is because this line here has no fitting besides what goes into the actual, um, so on this side. So it literally is just compressed onto the hydraulic fitting on the other end. And we don't really want to pull that whole system off and mess with it. If we're going to do that, we'd put it in a newer system anyway. Some other things we've done since the last episode, we threw synchro mesh into the transmission. Here, that's where the synchro mesh goes. Um, this is the manual transmission. This is also where you fill it. Uh, the synchro mesh is now, let's see if this kind of will work on camera. It's not leaking, but it's also not really uh, full. But it's not leaking, which is the important part. It's hard to do that with one hand. So we just need some more synchro mesh, but the fact that it ain't leaking, it's very good. The old transmission leaked around the seals. Um, we also blocked that off on this side, the coolant reservoir overflow tank. So that's just gonna kind of be our random high air side. So that's gonna be high side on this side, gonna be our high side on the front side. And we just need to have a access to it on both sides so that we don't have any air pockets. Air pockets are what blow motors. Ask me how I know that. Um, so we just want this whole system to be bleedable and as uh, safe as possible for the quad four. This is kind of a high tolerance motor built by a, <laughs> built by me or put in by in this car by me, which means that it is low tolerant to my bullshit. So here, here's another new motor. As you can see, this is an 84 because of the way this is set up up here. So we're gonna have to pull this apart and kind of take a look, see inside. Uh, we already checked the electronics on the, I don't know how it works, but the commutator, the little arms, they're both fine. It looks like someone got in here rather recently. It looks like the plastic rivets need to come off and the whole thing can come apart. We can examine the um, gear. I'll show you in the old gear what the issue was. So this is kind of, this is the new to me motor. This is the old to me motor, the one that came with the car. So what there's a, a gear in here that moves the motor up and down. This, the actual um, armature goes in here. And you can see on the back here, there's a uh, part that cuts it off. So power comes in and when it reaches a certain cutoff point, it clicks that down and disconnects it. Same thing when it goes up. So this is good in here. What I suspect might be happening is, if you can see right here, this is plastic, this is metal. When these things go around, you see there's a little clutch in there that kind of has a um, start stop to it. So as this kind of gets close to the top, it reaches a point of maximum and then it stops. Uh, this stops turning, which is the part that's actually connected to the Headlight, 
and it basically will cause this to click off. And then that way, when you start going down, there's a brief delay, and then it actually takes the whole thing and pushes it back down. But as you can see, when it reaches that point, it no longer has any teeth, so it won't push anymore. And this is the part you have to fix in most of these systems. It's not a very robust system because again, it is metal on plastic and it just wears out over time. Uh, again, Ronnie Dickman, the guy I bought the uh, brackets from, he sells a metal uh, replacement for this that does require a bit of, you know, taking this whole thing apart, messing with it. My hope is when I get into this one, it seems like someone's already been in here because the uh, connectors here were not worn down at all. My hope is to find that this one has a metal gear along with the other new one I got and that it's some other part of the system that's wrong because as long as that metal gear is fine, this whole thing is a lot easier to work with. So seeing as how this wasn't a car that was involved in an accident when I pulled it out of it, this probably was working at the time. The only thing is, is when I got it, when I found it in the junkyard, there were some parts of it that weren't connected. But the fact that it goes up and down and will actually click off when it comes down without an issue um, is good. The fact that it won't go up could be an electrical issue purely on this car. So we're going to see how that works out. So that's kind of all I have for you today. You can spend the remainder just looking at my gears. Look at that. Look at that. Like that don't work. You see, it kind of just floats around in there. And you got this bit that's connected to here. Yeah, it's, so that's all we got for today. So we're going to be mess. When I get a chance to get into here, I'll take you along for a ride on that. Um, as well as the other one. Other than that, do internet things. Um, we're going to get the fan. That's probably the next thing we're going to look at in the hydraulic system. And then probably brief amount of time for me to just kind of figure out what I'm going to do with the clutch linkage. And then as soon as I get that sorted out, I'll take you along on the ride. If you like what you see, tell someone. You know how this internet thing works. Have a good one. Goodbye.